Hello and welcome to the third video on this channel, within which we'll be building a realistic downtown core and an aesthetically pleasing skyline on the road layout which we built in the last video. While in the last video I focused a lot on how to make a realistic layout, there really isn't much to making a financial core realistic, but there is a lot in terms of how you can make the skyline actually look good. I often see screenshots of skylines that have independently nice buildings but the skyline itself doesn't come together nicely because all of the buildings are right next to each other or the height differences don't play off of each other. So in this video I'll show you how to build a realistic financial core layout while guiding you through the steps of building your skyline, not as a collection of independent buildings, but as one cohesive piece. Normally I list the mods and assets which are key to the video, but for this video I'll only be listing the mods, and I'll name and link the main buildings I use uh, within the video. These mods are only the essentials for building placement in Skylines, and my full mod collection is in the description. I've also made a collection of the main office buildings used in this video, which I'll also link down below. The first step in building your Skyline is placing three to four of what we'll call core buildings. These are the buildings that will define your Skyline, one of which should be the tallest by a viewable difference. For our tallest building, I've used the Chung Kong Center from Hong Kong by XDBX. Our other core buildings are the LA Aeon Center by Baldry Building and the PWC and Crystal Towers from Madrid by Ben Tracker. The core building should be the tallest and most iconic in your skyline. The next step is placing your secondary buildings, which are tall towers that are part of your skyline, but aren't iconic and mostly serve to emphasize your core buildings. Real life examples would be 50 Fremont Center in San Francisco or the Bay Adelaide Center in Toronto. Some of our more interesting secondary towers are the Kemper Corporation Building and 111 South Wacker, both Chicago buildings by Honker. Nowadays, a lot of office tower construction comes in pairs or trios as developers construct complexes. So I recommend placing pairs of secondary buildings, as I've done here with Luminous 1 California Plaza from Los Angeles. You'll notice that I haven't really used any extremely iconic buildings, such as the Empire State or one of Shanghai's three towers. And I feel that unless you're building a city in a certain style, you should avoid these iconic towers and instead use recognizable but not emblematic buildings, such that your skyline can have its own personality. This is it. My best tip on constructing good looking skylines. Don't place buildings of the same height next to each other. You don't want a skyline that is flat on the top, and nor do you want a skyline that is a pyramid with a symmetrical taper on each end. You want your skyline to be more like a ridge line, with a clear peak but varying heights on the way there. Once you've placed the buildings that will define your skyline, you want to work on the waterfront before fitting out the downtown. Not all of your cities will have their financial cores on the waterfront, but a great real life example to follow would be Lower Manhattan in New York. The buildings on your waterfront shouldn't be as tall as your secondaries, but they should be more architecturally unique and interesting buildings, as skyscrapers on the waterfront tend to be more modern developed, built over outer warehouses and the like. Another good idea to follow is to place an angled building somewhere to create an interesting sight line leading up to your downtown along the waterfront, as I have done with Sankforms Bank of Skyline. I'm a huge fan of this building I'm placing here, which is Luminous Tour and City from Lyon, France. It's a great piece of international style architecture, and I use it in a lot of my cities. I've also placed Reaper's Ritz Carlton Hotel from Lower Manhattan on this curve here. Placing buildings that work with the quirks of your road network is a great way to add personality to your downtown. What I've done here is I've placed all of the unique buildings that I potentially use in the city because placing directly from the UU menu is quite difficult. I've replaced the Crystal Tower with another core building, which is the Grand Thornton Tower from Chicago by Hunt. Now I'm just rearranging the middle blocks of the core for a nicer skyline, and it's important to put short buildings in the core 
because those gaps between skyscrapers really make the whole city look more real. It's important to be willing to alter your road network to place buildings more effective. Since we have the port and industry opposite the core and the mountain opposite the water, these offices would have to transition directly into the industrial area. Were I building the whole city, I'd place some surface parking lots, garages, and a few more brutalist concrete office towers uh, to transition the area. The next step on the way to crafting a beautiful skyline is through using the most powerful mod on the workshop, procedural objects, to resize buildings such that they are the exact height and size you want them to be. For more precision, you could use the edit tool and edit the vertices directly, but that takes effort and a lot of computer power for more complex assets. I take the easy route and use advanced addition tools to increase slash decrease the height, width, and length of buildings, as I have done here on the Arriva and Grant Thornton Towers. The final step in building a realistic financial core is simply building out to the edge of it, where zoning would transition into high-density mixed-use residential buildings, which we will build in the next video. As you move away from your core, it's important to remember that you're not transitioning into suburbs. Your city and its density will continue beyond the core, especially along major avenues and roads. So while you're definitely going to be placing shorter buildings on average, Continue to place moderately tall towers, and focus on those important intersections. As you can see, a lot of the buildings I've placed here align very well with the diagonal road, especially this smaller one here, which is the city gate from Stuttgart by the Lost Cake. If you have angled roads and can't fit your buildings up to the angle, I'd recommend making that little triangle of exposed space a park or a plaza. Just some benches and trees can change the unrealistic and unsightly spot into a nice place for your sims to relax. Here I've turned this building into a procedural object to get rid of the included plaza which doesn't fit with the roads. Doing this allows me to lower it without changing the terrain. Here I'm just finishing up the final buildings. There's not much to it as I'm just filling in the grid. And that about wraps up our downtown. For the cinematics, I just lined the roads with trees and placed some tram stops to bring a bit of life into the city. The skyline might look a bit too tall, especially from the angle we'll see here, but in the next video we'll be building the rest of the downtown with a lot of residential, commercial, and even a few more offices. If you like this video and want to catch the next one, don't forget to subscribe or leave a like, and thank you for watching.